Okay, let's talk about uh, environmental regulations. There's another issue where there's a schism, kind of, I think, between the federal government and and uh, and the, the state of California. Um, for instance, there's uh, now the 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 uh, the nation, uh, the federal government is permitting, and I believe you can help me with this, uh, offshore drilling uh, off the off the coast of California. I know it was off the off the coast of Florida as well, I believe. Um, but yet, California does not, I believe, want this. So. That's an example of, of environmental regulations that California wants to, I think, be much more firm on than the federal government. So how do you balance those two concerns? So the Trump administration is uh, launching an assault on a whole host of different environmental protections that are important to California. You mentioned uh, the president's uh, order directing federal agencies to do rulemakings to open up drilling off our coasts. Uh, You mentioned as well um, their uh, efforts to try to reduce the size of what are called national monuments or large uh, federal uh, parks that have been established by presidential order. Um, The president has also uh, declared war on the clean air laws, uh, where there's a, a provision in the clean air law that allows California to set its own California standards, and that's been used to drive standards across the country. Uh, the Trump administration's EPA announced they want to go after that. It's a long list. So for each and every one of these, I think uh, there are very uh, good legal bases to challenge what the Trump administration is doing, and certainly as attorney general, I would do that. But I think it's important to note that the, the Office of Attorney General is not just challenging the Trump administration. As I mentioned, with regard to the Armed Prohibited, Prohibited Persons database, uh, there are other important aspects of the job that need to get done and are not getting done right now. One of those is holding ExxonMobil accountable for its years of lying about climate change and telling its shareholders that climate change wasn't real and it wasn't man-made and they need not worry about it, while at the same time their own scientists internally were reaching the opposite conclusion that climate change is real, it's man-made, and it's going to have an impact on oil prices, and sending communications and memos to the senior leadership of ExxonMobil telling that, while at the same time, those senior leaders of ExxonMobil were saying exactly opposite to the public and shareholders. Well, that's a potential breach of their fiduciary obligation to the shareholders. Uh, The New York and Massachusetts attorneys generals have opened investigations, subpoenaed documents, they're involved in litigation with ExxonMobil right now. California has not joined that litigation. We should, if I were attorney general, uh, I'd be joining New York and Massachusetts attorneys generals and holding ExxonMobil accountable for its lies and its denial of climate change. I think it's also important to note that uh, there's a distinction not only between myself and the current occupant of the attorney general's office on this policy issue, but I'm refusing to take any contributions from oil companies, and he's taking contributions from oil companies. So I think it's important to recognize that the battle is not just with the Trump administration. There are important other issues that need to be addressed that are being addressed that I would plan to address as attorney general. 